Hi everybody, it's me, Beth Maitland of Drama Queen Bee Quilt Studios, and I'm back with another vlog post for you, and I think this might be number four. And today we're actually going to talk about a project we're going to work on. I may do this in two vlogs, in two parts, because as you may know from watching my first three, if you did, um, I try to limit these to 15 minutes, and the first, this first one uh, in this two-part is going to be show and tell. I would love for you to see the various options. And it also, uh, because as we've been discussing, this is all part of connecting and being a part of this YouTube vlogging community, um, I want to do a shout out to Stitches by Julia, who taught me this technique just by watching YouTube. And um, she is very clever. And although what I'm going to show you uses a lot of her techniques and one of her designs, I will link all the information in the description box below so that you can go take her classes too. There's absolutely no reason for me to teach this all over again. Julia is so talented and so lovely. She lives somewhere in the Midwest and she's uh, really fun to listen to, um, really fun to watch, um, and very clever. She's also a scrapbooker and she crosses things over between paper products and paper uh, projects um, to fabric to sewing with paper and sewing combining paper and fabric so it's lots of fun and there'll be lots of fun things for you to find so introducing you today uh, in which we talk about stitches by Julia and a project I made using some of her techniques a couple of projects and then I'm going to demo um, sort of how I do it on my new little Tula, I'm calling her. Um, but first, I want to say thank you, everyone, for your lovely reaction, your feedback, your comments in the uh, comment section below. Uh, continue to do that. I love hearing from you, but you've been so supportive and so helpful. And there have even been um, some lovely personal things that have been communicated to me that I am so grateful for. Um, today was a very drizzly rainy day here in the beautiful central coast of California and so we were out in it and so I'm going to insert a little clip of my drive to Home Depot. <laughs> my daughter and I are working on an outdoor project. She is obsessed with succulents and um, I may also get her to tell me what her um, her tags are for Instagram. You can go over to her Instagram and take a look at her succulent arrangements that she does. She's taken over my whole little back deck during the pandemic, and we've been. She's been propagating babies and anything that falls off of something. She plants it, <laughs> and she's been. Um, we've been doing all kinds of little projects around our little she calls it our little island it, we have our little wee wee acre our little tiny farm uh, we've been doing all kinds of projects too and beautification things and that's what we're working on here as well right now um i am looking for a tiered fountain to go into an area that we recently cleared all the old we dug up all the old plants that were not surviving and cleared this area and now we need to figure out something to do with it so to combine her interests and mine, I'm looking for, that's the heater going off, so now we can hear each other. Um, uh, I'm looking for a cement, beautiful, tiered fountain to go in this area. And then instead of water, because we're in California where water is a premium, a very, very precious commodity, and where we don't like to overdo any landscaping uh, with things that require a lot of water, we're not going to have water in the fountain. We're going to fill it with succulents and <clears throat> trailing succulents that will flow over that will look like uh, water coming down to the next tier and the next tier. And she's really excited about designing. She's already creating ideas of what kind of plants she wants to put in it. So we're in the process of clearing the ground, leveling, setting stones. Now we're going to get our setting, our paver to put the fountain on. Having trouble in the pandemic, finding fountains, finding products, finding anybody that can supply us with anything that isn't just sitting in their nursery at the moment. And of course, not completely comfortable going out shopping for it. So even looking online, there's like a three to six month wait for some of these things because so many factories, I imagine, have been closed and, you know, processing yards and stuff. So anyway, we're, um, we're but we today, in the rain, drove to Home Depot. And I just did a little quick clip that I will put in here of our trip to Home Depot. So 
so this is the beautiful area that we live in and what we get to see on a regular basis uh, when we're just running normal chores and I'm, I feel so grateful. So the little project we're going to look at is not quilting, although quilting techniques are used. It's not a paper uh, project, although paper can be used and inserted and a part of it if you wish. So it's gonna kind of cross over a little bit and it's a small project that I can work on up here in my little upstairs sewing space I made in my breakfast nook that you saw in the first couple of episodes. Um, I am, I have made a gift that I'm going to give to my friend that I bought this beautiful Tula sewing machine from, Stacy. I'm, so now she's going to watch this and she's going to know it's coming. I'm doing a custom quilt for her. Um, she has a, a new grandbaby, so she sent me the quilt top and I'm getting that all ready to send back. So in it will be, she sent me some special treats, so I'm going to send her a special treat, but I wanted to share it with you before I send it. So now, um, spoiler alert, Stacy, turn it off. <laughs> If you're watching this vlog, and if not, this is what's coming your way. So this is a little, what does it say, needle case. And um, I made it using Stitches by Julia's techniques on a day that my daughter and I just wanted to fool around. And the it's very simple and very fun, very creative, very free-flowing, loose, th whatever's in your drawer of scraps you can use, whatever's in your drawer of old ribbons and buttons and pins and jewelry and broken things and funny, goofy things you can use for something like this. Um, but like I said, go to Stitches by Julia uh, here on YouTube and she'll teach you all about it. In the meantime, I wanted you to see my version. I just used the stitches learning my new sewing machine and I used stitches from my sewing machine to write this on with stitches on a piece of batik, which I layered on a piece of quilter's cotton and then I layered with another piece of cotton over it. So it's almost like improvisational piecing. Then this is old um, lingerie elastic and an old button from the 50s that came off of one of my old dresses from when I was a baby. And um, this, so this little flap is the cover, an old ribbon I found, a little rose I found that I hand stitched on. This on the back, remember when they had guardian angel pen, lapel pins everyone was sharing and handing out? I found one in a drawer. So I put a guardian angel pin in for my friend Stacy. And <clears throat> this is from my embroidery machine. This is also from a fantastically talented embroidery design um, uh, online uh, provider. Um, our, beautiful artist um, called Urban Threads. And she's an Irish girl, so she's uh, good with me because I'm, a, as you know, a UK stew. I'm half Scottish and uh, the rest, the other half is uh, Londoner and uh, Irish. So, um, so uh, shout out to Urban Threads. I'll put that in the, oh, I'm gonna have that, get the hang of this uh, in the description box below. So anyway, this started out as just one piece and the fabric, as Julia will tell you, is just utility canvas. It's like drop cloth material that painters use. You can buy it at Joanne Fabric. You can buy it at box stores. You can buy it online by the yard. It's stiff and a little bit heavy. It's but it's um it's muslin color. It's unbleached, so it's got it's it's a canvas for all of your ideas and creations. This is just some bulky yarn that I looped and then just sewed down with the sewing machine. This is just a piece of embroidery on linen and it has a layer of batting underneath and I just frayed the edges and cut the batting back and just sewed it on top of another piece of just, this is just a little a rectangle of quilter's calico and this is all scraps. This is specialty yarn for a crocheting project. I took a class on crocheting once and it was just extra yarn. I made more loops and sewed it down to the foundation. This is an old piece of just snipped um, pink lace that I cut into a strip. Again, hand scrunched it as I was sewing it. Just do it free form, no, not complicated. This is an old piece of Dupiani silk that was just a little strand left. So I knotted it and frayed it and um, bunched it up and tied it in a half bow and just sewed it down with the sewing machine. So everything is just kind of extra little scraps and things that might go together in the colorway. And then let's look inside. So when Stacy wants her needles, she'll open it and with my scrapbookers alert, with my archival, which is also waterproof ink, I just made this little, I stamped it and stamped this pocket, made a pocket out of extra um, utility um, fabric sewed a little bit of old trim that I found laying around and stuck in a little in the little pocket some uh, hand stitching needles a collection of different sizes and lengths um, this is a page where she can put threaded needles and this is just batting 
This is just two little strips of batting that I sewed down the middle. You'll see when we turn the page again. Um, and this page is just to stick your threaded needles in. And um, I found this little plastic piece in a drawer and so I just hand sewed it on as a little decoration. But she can put her threaded needles all along on this page. And then here's the middle in which there is a decorative um, tag and tassel that came from a, a clothing line that I frequent. I love Johnny Was clothing and these come on all of their tags. So I save them and I make things with them. And this has a little pocket. Again, there's some just, you know, cute little um, uh, um, pins. And in this pocket is what we all need, a seam ripper. And I just stuck that in. And then here, it, this is available if she wants to stick in a thimble or a uh, I don't know, a, a, a needle threader or something of that nature of she wants to add to this little pocket or she can add more uh, threaded needles or whatever she wants. And this is the center seam. And um, Julia will teach you all about how to do this, but it's just two strips of extra batting. And in this page, I put in some extras because Julia suggests to do this, it's so clever. Two antique pearl buttons and an antique pink button on a pin in case she wants to sew something on as a decoration or make one of these herself for someone else. Some of the uh, trim I used, this is the salvage of the utility fabric. I always save it. I start at one end, I snip, and then I tear it. It helps it fray. But this is the perfect thing to wrap gifts with or tie presents with. Um, this It's just the selvage edge torn. So it's once you get it in a bow or wrapped around twice, you can use it instead of twine with, with baker's paper or um, all kinds of interesting things. And I can see now that we're getting, I better start talking faster because we're getting close to our deadline. And this is the last page. Make it magic. And this is the back of that little... Um, angel pin I told you about. And now I wanted to show you, you'll see when you go over to Julia's page, this is um, this is the, the utility fabric blank. And I use uh, just a um, water soluble marker to draw little things in that I want to stitch. And then here is an example of a couple of works in progress. I just um, layered some batting, some utility fabric, and some quilter's cotton. And I drew a little heart on it, and then I lowered the feed dogs on my little Tula, and I put in, loaded some black, um, just black construction thread, Coats and Clark cotton, uh, cotton and polyester construction thread. And I just did this little zigzaggy thing with the feed dogs down and my embroidery foot on, and that's why we're going to do a part two. In part two, I'm going to actually do uh, on a blank piece, I've got some blank bits of this utility fabric around here someplace. We're gonna draw something and then maybe layer it and we're gonna actually stitch. But before we get through to part two, uh, I wanna continue the blog with another example. This is a design that I got from Julia and you can purchase on her uh, little uh, Etsy shop and on her website, you, you'll see there's links when you get over to see her. She has all these adorable little designs and Easter's coming and I have a friend with two house bunnies, two bunnies at home. So I'm thinking about making her a little journal or something with this little bunny design that I got from Julia, Stitches by Julia. Um, and this is an example of a work I'm starting um, so that you can see how we use these little scraps. This is the cover of something. I don't know what yet. Maybe a little travel journal, a little purse journal, XOXO. And this is, again, layers of just quilting cotton and the utility fabric and just some stitches and stamps. Um, some little ribbons I had hanging around. And this is the inside empty. And pretty soon it's going to be lined with something. I don't know what yet. Um, maybe another layer of utility fabric to cover the stitches. Um, maybe batting in between to make them a little fluffy. And then some kind of a crease and some kind of a binding um, to make it into a little book of some kind. Maybe just for little notes. to care. Or maybe I'll write love notes in there for my friend or my daughter, whoever I give it to. And then this ties it shut. So um, that's some of the ways that I've been using Julia's ideas. Um, I made a lovely journal. I have one more minute on my deadline. I made a lovely journal I really like. And it's bound, uh, it's held together with um, elastic. She teaches this technique. This is some piecing uh, from my scrap box that I've sewed together and finished that I layered with batting and other piecing. So this is some of the selvage I scrunched and just sewed down and knotted each side. A little extra utility fabric with a trim, another Johnny Was shirt I must have bought. And inside, 
there's a little spot for a pen. There's a little wish for uh, uh, dreaming and wishing and a little notebook insert uh, held together by the, this, the same piece of elastic that holds this all shut. And here's the back. So as you can see, there's lots of things to learn from Julia at Stitches by Julia. And we're going to do some drawing with my little Tula in my next vlog. Thank you for taking a look. Look forward to part two of this, which I, what will that be? Vlog number five. So four and five will go together. Um, maybe they will be vlog four A and B. I don't know. But we'll, um, we'll actually get to the sewing machine and we'll do a sewing machine cam so you can actually see me do some stitching. And uh, then we'll, we'll uh, eliminate the, our, our marking pen with a little bit of water and it's magic. So lots, lots of things to think about and, and create from great ideas, great inspiration. Um, thank you very much for joining me. It's Beth Maitland at Drama Queen Bee Quilt Studio. Thank you for um, subscribing below and leaving a little comment if you like this idea. And this is for you scrapbookers that commented that wanted to have some smaller projects. So we'll be back with part two. Thank you. In the meantime, stop over to Stitches by Julia and learn some of this technique before we get started. All the very best. Everybody stay well, warm and dry. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.